The last video we did was about side plank variations, 10 ways to upgrade your side plank. We got some great comments and feedback, really appreciate it. Um, what Something we missed on that is we talked about upgrades, but what about regressions or I don't really want to call them downgrades, but what if some of the side plank in general is bothering something? It bothers your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, or maybe we just don't, we're not ready for it yet. What are some things you can do to take a step back to build your stuff up to that? So we're going to go over some of those details right now. All right, so the first one, the comment we got was about shoulder pain. I have shoulder pain and a side plank. Is there something going on? What should I do? You know, first and foremost, if you're having some serious shoulder pain outside of doing that, get it evaluated first and foremost. But if you're just having some, say, fatigue pain or maybe some irritation when in this position, then we can fix a few things and see if that corrects that sensitivity. Otherwise, I've got a few things you can do to help take the load off the shoulder because a side plank, even though it's a core exercise, is quite a shoulder exercise as well. So first we're going to go over what we call form failure. So a lot of times this will be called fatigue or a loss of form. But basically before you get fatigue, you start to lose positioning, proper ideal control um, before you actually fatigue out. Because you can hold a position in a very sloppy way and your body was resilient enough to do that. But we don't really want to push to fatigue on these exercises. These control and stability exercises, we want to go uh, the, the, the way you can do it perfectly the hardest exercise you can do very well and so we want to go to what we call form failure so when we set up this side plank we talked about before we don't want to be sloppy like this this is poor form we want to be able to take our shoulder away from the ear like we're pushing the elbow down to the ground our body away pack that shoulder blade into our back pocket lift the ribs up away from the ground so simultaneously it looks like this good and then are my nose sternum belt buckle, belly button should all be in a straight line. So it's from this into this. So that's first and foremost to take some stress away from the shoulder. Now another little tip you can do is you can pivot from the elbow outward like this. It's almost like think you're a windshield wiper or your arm here and you pivot from here and then kind of slide and push outward that way. By doing that, that loads up your shoulder blade muscles into your thorax or your, your, your body uh, better so it locks in. Another thing is to keep the thumb or the wrist flat here. We don't want to be doing this stuff. It changes your stability and loading into your shoulder, into your uh, torso. So you want to. Keep, so we'll do it again. We'll go here, pivot, push out into maybe like a 45 degree angle. So here's zero. We'll go 45, push outward, thumb down, hold that position. Now when we're ready, we're going to come up and forward. We're going to make sure that we're not arching the low back here. Come take this out, Mitch. Right. So we're not doing this. We're making sure when we come up, we're pushing the hips forward, back stays relatively neutral, not overextending like this, okay? Now that we have that position, we just hold. We hold here until we have form failure. This is a really good position right now. I'm gonna breathe here. What we don't wanna do is start doing this stuff here and trying to hold this for dear life. That is not beneficial. You've passed form failure, you need to take a break. We should come up, hold good positioning as soon as you feel like you can't do that anymore, whether this is getting sore, tired, shaking, you can't breathe well, take a break, and then you can do another set. Now, if you're doing this and you feel some shoulder strain, that is normal. Right now for me doing this, I feel my shoulder working, but it's not painful. If it's just too much and it's painful, what you can do is provide some hand and leg support. It's really simple. What you can do here is when you come up, you take this other arm and you provide support here. Right? By pushing harder here, you take some load off the shoulder. Another one you can do is use the top leg. This can also support as well. You can just do the leg, you can just do the hand, you can do both. You can push harder, you can do less. So you kind of scale it appropriately to be able to take that load off the shoulder. Good, and then sit back. Also, obviously, just spend less time here. If you can only hold five seconds, that's okay. Build it up so that you can hold it for a longer period of time. All right, so what's next, Mitch? So, um, so when I'm looking at the show notes here, actually show them right here, full transparency, right? 
Good, and come back. Yeah, unlike uh, you know uh, the election year and politicians, right? Full transparency. So uh, we went through hand and foot support. Next is what if um, someone mentioned? Uh, well, what about the the full side plank, not the arm? Why do you do the 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 forearm? The reason being is because when you have a longer arm like this, it's a lot harder to control really well. This is just a better position. This is just pretty tough, and people tend to not even get into ideal positioning. Tend to cheat through it. So the whole form failure thing is out the window. So we like the arm support better, but by all means, as long as you can control this well with the same principles, you can do this. But this can be a lot of stress and also people with wrist issues, it can be an issue. Note, if you have some wrist pain there, that's okay. You want to load your wrists, but if it's increasing and getting worse, you don't want to force through that. It's within like a Goldilocks zone. Not too much, not too little, just right. Don't be afraid of wrist pain, but if you're doing it and it's increasing, you may want to go to that forearm plank so we're not putting so much stress on the wrist. Now, so that's for the full side plank. That's why we're doing the forearm side planks. Next is what if the side plank just, just sucks for you altogether, right? Here's some other variations we can use that are side plank like, but not exactly a side plank, kind of like the, the suitcase carry I showed you at the end of the last video. So let's go ahead and set this up and, oh wait. The first one we're gonna do is gonna be the band pull. So this one actually comes from uh, a mentor or colleague of mine, Dr. Richard Ulm at uh, Columbus Chiropractic and Rehabilitation Center, shout out. Um, this, it basically you take a band, it has to be anchored somewhere, or you can use a cable machine at the gym. But basically you take it and you're gonna step out and get some tension in the band. And what we're gonna do is think that your legs are in cement. So we're not bending at the hips. We're not doing this here. We're locked in. And what we're going to do from the belt buckle up is we're going to do a little bit of tilting left and right. Good. So you can see from here, if this is the pivot point, I'm just tilting nice and slow. And I can slow it down to really build that control. Make sure you're breathing. We want to make sure rib cage and pelvis are connected. We're not, come over here, Mitch. Right, we don't want to be in this J-Lo booty position like this. This is not helpful. It's a lot of compression and extension in the low back, a lot of tension in the muscles there. So we want to make sure that belt buckle is pulled up, rib cage down. We're in that relatively neutral spine like we were doing with the side plank. Good, and then on a tilt right and tilt left. Nice and slow and controlled, making sure we're not moving the whole body. Right? You're gonna feel more pressure in your left leg because the, those tensions pulling that way. So you'll have more pressure here. If you're out this far and you're starting to fall, come in a little closer or use a different tension band. But all we're doing is we're locking down here, belt buckle below in cement, and we're tilting from side to side. Good. Now, if you don't have a band, uh, maybe at the gym you have some TRXs. Um, this is not a TRX, it's a jungle gym. Same thing, there's suspension straps. TRX is a brand, it's like calling you know, a tissue Kleenex. Um, but it doesn't matter, any sort of handles on attached to an anchor works. So you can do the same idea here instead of having a band. So basically, you're gonna get in a leaning angle like this, and you're simply just gonna hold here. Now, this can bother your shoulder, if there's a lot of shoulder challenge here, but it's not compressive like in the side plank. This is more distraction, pull away. But either way, this can be a lot of shoulder challenge here. So um, if this is painful, we want to pick a different one. But this is also a phenomenal shoulder and core exercise at the same time, just like the side plank. So now that I'm in this position, I can simply hold here if I want. I can also add in a little bit of shifting my hips if I want. Not a ton, we're not doing this stuff here, okay? This is ridiculous. This, this is the stuff that comes up on Instagram of like gym failures. We wanna go nice and easy, just like this. We can go a little bit deeper, a little aggressive. If you have a problem with this, or you feel like this is too aggressive, or you feel like you're gonna fall, you can put something here to hold on to. You can bring this leg out here for a little bit of support and do the same thing. Good. Anything else I missed in that, Mitch? No, you sure? Mm -hmm. Perfect, huh? Okay. All right, next one. We talked about last time doing a suitcase carry like this. We also have what we'll call like a fireman's or fire person's carry. We can do here, adds a little bit more shoulder. Um, but a lot of times, speaking of gym failures, you see people in the gym doing this stuff here. Right? This is a little ridiculous. I understand what they're trying to do, they're trying to work their obliques and all that sort of stuff, the love handles, but this is just silly. You're bending from side to side and it can actually cause more problems in your spine than, than, uh, than what you'd like. It's more risk than reward. So how we would do this to, to mimic what we did with the band and the TRX straps is the same idea, but we're gonna go slow and controlled. We're gonna do a small bend and then bring it back. 
So you watch my shoulders or my fingertips in relative to my thighs. I'm just doing slow and controlled tilts here. You can also do it in a split stance too. Good, or you could even do it in half kneeling, right? So that gives you the same idea, but now we're more in the pelvis, we're taking away cheating at the lower leg. And this also mimics a developmental position, so very, very natural. Good, all right? And then lastly, what do we have? The pal-off press. Okay, so here's another variation. The, all the side plank stuff, it's all, our body moves in three dimensions, where we have forward, we have side to side, and rotation. The plank stuff is all a lot of side to side, lateral stability loading. This one is very similar, but a little more rotational, but it's, it's close enough that I'd like to show it to you. Uh, it's basically a pal-off press. You can look it up. Simply what a pal-off press is, is that you essentially set up here like this, and now I have that lateral stability going on like like before but I'm just holding here and I'm pressing forward and back so what's happening here now is my body's wanting to rotate and I'm anti rotating using my core my obliques and all that stuff while using some movement here so what we can do with the pal-off press is kind of the same idea of the band pull we can start here and we can simply do step outs you can bring it out here and do some step outs Right, we're gonna get a lot of that lateral stuff there. You can hold here and you can do the same thing. You can do a little tilt back and forth. Good, you can bring in closer to make it a little easier. Good, we can go split stance. Good, and we can go half kneeling. Right, all of these things are gonna work your core in the way the side plank does without having to do a side plank. So if you're having shoulder issues or you wanna change up your side plank and get the same stimulus from a side plank without actually doing a side plank, you've got these variations here. And then by all means, if you wanna do a full hand side plank as well with all the moves we showed you uh, today or actually from the last video, you can do all those forearm side plank moves in a full side plank. Just make sure you're setting up well good positioning, good control, and you're only performing to form failure. And we'll see you next time.